This video will show you how to set up a Shile solidification simulation with back diffusion in the primary phase. The ability to calculate back diffusion in the primary phase was added to the Shile calculator in ThermoCalc 2020A. So this example requires that you use ThermoCalc 2020A or newer. This feature also uses diffusion data, so it requires both a thermodynamic and mobility database. If you do not have these databases, you can run example T10, which was included with your software, in the Help menu, Examples Files, ThermoCalc. It uses demo databases that are included in your software, so it can be run by anyone with ThermoCalc 2020A or newer. This example uses the aluminum alloy AA7075 and compares four solidification simulations. The equilibrium simulation, a classic Shile Gulliver simulation, and two simulations that consider back diffusion, one with a fast cooling rate of 100 kelvins per second, and one with a slow cooling rate of 0.7 kelvins per second. The simulations are also compared to experimental data. To begin the calculation, select the Shile solidification simulation template from the home screen of ThermoCalc. The new back diffusion feature requires diffusion data, so you must use both a thermodynamic and mobility database. Select the aluminum-based alloys package, which will load both the TCAL and MOBAL databases. Next, select the elements aluminum, silicon, iron, copper, manganese, magnesium, and zinc. From the top, set silicon to 0.2, iron to 0.25, copper to 1.6, manganese to 0.15, magnesium to 2.5, and zinc to 5.6. This automatically sets aluminum to 89.7. We are now done defining our system, so click on the Shile Calculator node. We will use the default values for the start temperature, steps, and units, so make sure your values match mine. Just below these is the new checkbox for back diffusion in the primary phase. When you click on this new feature, you will see fields to define the cooling rate, estimate secondary dendrite arm spacing, and select the primary phase. First, we will set the cooling rate to 0.7 kelvins per second. This is considered to be a slow cooling rate, and such a rate would usually only be used in a laboratory setting. The next field we encounter is an empirical equation for estimating the secondary dendrite arm spacing. The parameters in the equation are material specific, so you can change them to fit your particular material. We will accept the default that is given. Finally, we will set the primary phase to FCC A1. The program automatically selects a primary phase, and it is usually the first phase to form. But you can always set your own primary phase if you prefer. Next, click on Show Advanced Options and set Terminate On to at 0.005. This defines at which liquid fraction the calculation terminates. Leave all other values the same. This example compares the results of two back diffusion calculations with one standard child calculation, so we need to add two more calculators and rename all of them. Right-click on the Shile Calculator node, select Rename, and name it 0.7 kelvins per second, which is the cooling rate we set for this calculation. Now right-click on the calculator node and select Clone, which will copy the settings from our first calculation. Right-click on the new calculator, select Rename, and name it 100 kelvins per second. This calculation is the same as the first one we set, but it has a faster cooling rate, so change the cooling rate to 100 kelvins per second. If you click on the Show Advanced Options button, you will see that Terminate On is set at 0.005 because it was cloned from the previous calculator. Now right-click on the System Definer, highlight Create New Successor, and select Shile Calculator. Right-click on the new calculator, select Rename, and name this one Shile. This will be a classic Shile calculation, so we will not check the back diffusion box. Click on the Show Advanced Options button and set Terminate On to at 0.005. And once again, leave all other values the same. 
Lastly, we will set up our plot. So right-click on the Plot Renderer node, highlight Add Predecessor, and select 100 kelvins per second. Right-click on it one more time, highlight Add Predecessor again, and select Shile. In the Plot Configuration pane, click Show Grid in the top center of the pane, then change the Legend option to Axis Quantity. Under the Y-axis, uncheck the box next to Automatic Scaling to give us a better view of the plot. Set the limits from 440 to 640, stepping at 20. Select the 100 kelvins per second tab and set the Legend option to Axis Quantity. Finally, select the Shile tab and set the Legend option to Axis Quantity there as well. We want to compare the results of the calculations to experimental data, so we need to add an EXP file. You can find a link to this file in the description below this video. If you are following along with the calculation, download the file now. Right-click on the My Project node, highlight Create New Activity, and select Experimental File Reader. Click on the folder icon to retrieve the file. Now we need to link the experimental file to the plot renderer, so right-click on the plot renderer node, highlight Add Predecessor, and select Experimental File. We are now ready to run the calculation, so right-click on the plot renderer node and select Perform Now. Once the calculation is complete, a plot will appear. The three calculations we set up are represented by the colored lines. Equilibrium is represented by the dotted line, and the experimental data points are represented by the triangles. The blue line is the classic Shile calculation, which uses the Shile-Gulliver model. This model assumes zero diffusion in the solidified material and infinitely fast diffusion in the liquid. The two lines in the middle are the Shile calculations that have back diffusion in the primary phase. The red line has a higher cooling rate of 100 kelvins per second, and the green line has a lower cooling rate of 0.7 kelvins per second. As is expected, the higher the cooling rate, the closer the line is to a classic Shile calculation. As the cooling rate is reduced, the line moves closer to equilibrium. The experimental data uses a cooling rate of 0.7 kelvins per second, and we can see that it matches fairly closely with the calculation that uses the same cooling rate. We hope you enjoyed this video. Do you have suggestions for how to make this video better? or ideas for videos you would like us to make? Leave your suggestions and ideas in the comments section below so that we can continue to improve our videos.